Every year, I like to refresh my advice about how I'd go about learning data science from ground zero. The data domain is changing rapidly, and as my own knowledge grows, I think it's important to reevaluate the approach that I would recommend taking to start learning this field again. Just like last year, my advice for learning data science has changed slightly. And in this video, I'll give you my updated learnings about how I take on learning this field and have some fun along the way. As a disclaimer, I don't think that there is one correct way to learn data science. Different things work for different people, and your own experimentation is integral to your success in any career. I'll address my thought process for what changes, but I'll also address the most commonly asked question associated with starting data science that I'll leave for the end of the video. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Starting off, I wanna debunk this idea that you can learn data science. This implies that data science is a static subject that can be learned in its entirety. For better or for worse, data science is constantly evolving and growing. Say, are, are you changing? Evolving, evolving is the accurate term. I don't know a single person, including myself, they could possibly know the whole field. Learning data science is a journey, not a destination, and coming in with this mindset, can make this process far more enjoyable for you. I see so many students who get overwhelmed by how large the field is. It'll 100% be completely overwhelming if your goal is to learn the entire domain. On the other hand, it becomes pretty manageable if you focus on just learning a little at a time and growing your knowledge with specific smaller goals in mind. It means setting small, reasonable goals. Now, with that being said, let's jump straight into something that I would change about my approach from last year. When I look back, my advice about the very beginning and how to start, it's been extremely vague. I usually say something like, learn enough Python and statistics to get started with projects. Do just enough to get started with working on real projects. While that isn't exactly bad advice, this time around, I wanna get more into the weeds about exactly how you should start this learning process. The real first step is getting an understanding of the components of the field and creating a learning program for yourself to navigate the journey. If we just jumped in the middle of the ocean without any clear direction and we started swimming, we'd get tired out really easily and we'd probably just give up. We'd get physically tired and we'd also get mentally tired. On the other hand, if we have a map and a clear objective, we at least know what we're getting ourselves into we're less likely to reach that mental fatigue, although our physical muscles would probably wear out pretty soon. You need to create this map for your data science learning before you do anything else. The really cool part about this though, is that by creating this map, you'll also learn a lot about the field of data science in general. You're probably thinking, well, how would I go about creating this map? There are a couple ways to do this with varying levels of overhead work. The easiest way is to just take an online course or certificate that lays it out for you. The biggest benefit of online courses is that they can lay out the entire learning path and all you have to do is follow along. On the other hand, most online courses, they, they cost money. <laughs> all the information is out there for you to learn for free if you really want to, but you have to be willing to put in the time and the effort to create this roadmap for yourself. To be clear, there's no right or wrong here. If paying for the organization is worth it too great, if you don't wanna spend the money, that's great too. If courses are really your speed, I have a discount code for 365 Data Science in the description below. If not, I've included plenty of links to my favorite free online resources as well. The next way would be to look at multiple online courses, university courses, and other resources to get a general feel about how they lay out the path. Most paid courses will let you see how their offering is structured. You can make your own roadmap based on the classes and the concepts that you see there. By doing this, you also get the feeling for what skills and techniques are needed in the domain. But the fun thing is you get to see what might be most interesting and appealing to you as you go through and start learning about the basics of these things. This is gonna be really important later on, this idea of what you find interesting. Okay, let's talk about what my learning plan would look like for myself. I encourage you to do your own research here and adjust this based on your, again, your own interests and aptitudes. If I were to lay out a learning plan for myself, I would almost certainly start with learning Python. Coding languages allow you to build things. If you can build things, you can apply almost anything that you're working on to a real problem. I look at learning a programming language like building out my tool set. I could build a, you know, a shed in my backyard with just my bare hands, but it'd be a heck of a lot easier if I had a hammer and a drill. Python for this learning journey and for me is my set of power tools. I've personally almost always felt that coding is what held me back from picking up things faster compared to the math or the other elements. And to be clear, the math is very important. I know I'll get brutalized in the comments if I don't say that. I just wouldn't 
necessarily focus on it first. For the programming, I would make sure that I had a solid understanding of the basics, like variables, loops, and functions. I would also really focus on learning how to use imported libraries like pandas. In fact, I recommend looking through as much of the pandas documentation as possible. I've obviously linked that below as well. In my mind, coding for data science isn't really like real coding. You're more leveraging tools that other people have built that serve a specific purpose. For example, I think having a really great understanding of pandas would serve most data scientists better than having a phenomenal understanding of just pure Python. I've included some free and paid resources for learning Python in the description below as well. Now, last year, Ken would have told you to get started with projects right after this. This year, Ken would recommend an extra step for most people. Now, that step is to remember to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> Okay, in all seriousness, this past year I've gotten a ton of feedback that most people don't know where to start with projects after learning some of these basic skills. There's a really good solution to this. Look at other people's projects. You can go on Kaggle.com and you can see the projects that other people have done. You get to see all their code, you get to see all the comments they leave about their thought process. And to me, this is an absolute gold mine. You get to have front row seats to how brilliant data scientists approach a problem. I am by no means brilliant, <laughs> but I have linked a video I did of a walkthrough of the Titanic data set in the top right corner. That could be a good starting point for you as well. When beginning with these projects, they don't have to be original. You can go through the exact same analysis that someone else did and still learn something. A typical learning session could just be you having someone else's project on half the screen and you typing it line by line and running it on the other half of the screen. As you do this, you can change the parameters. You can experiment with different visuals and see how it all works as you go. You should not be taking credit for this work or publish it as your own, but you can 100% learn from other people's work in this way. Many people don't think they'll learn anything from this approach, but I personally use this and it's, it's probably been the single thing that's taken my data science learning the furthest over the last year or two. Again, I've linked a resource in the top right corner with a few of my favorite starter projects for you to explore. While you're going through these different workbooks, you'll inevitably start seeing different tools, algorithms, and techniques that you're probably not familiar with. You should be taking note of these and doing research about what they are as you go. At this point, you're probably seeing some things pretty frequently, so train test splits, different classification algorithms, things like that. And I recommend now getting familiar with some statistics and the algorithms that you'll be using very frequently. You wanna have a solid foundational understanding of statistics, particularly central tendency, probability theory, things like that, linear algebra, and then just a little bit of calculus in there. I think the calculus could probably wait for a little while as well. Start learning about what the difference is between classification, regression, and clustering algorithms, and start thinking about the types of problems that you can solve with these. Are there data sets that you've seen in the past that you could apply these algorithms to? Are there questions that you have about things in your, you know, in your personal life that might fit into some of these categories. Before you feel comfortable with any of these things is when I think you should start with the projects and they should be the main focus of your learning. I'd really do as many projects as I could find. I do them on Kaggle with my own data and with, with again, any data that I could find anywhere. <laughs> I have quite a few thoughts on the project process. I'm clearly very passionate about it. So to keep this video from droning on too much, I've included my entire data science project playlist in the top right corner. My friend, the data professor, says that the best way to learn data science is by doing data science. And I couldn't agree more. Projects are the first place where you're doing real data science. And earlier, I mentioned that being introspective about what parts of data science are exciting to you is also really important. This is where it plays a key role. In the early stages, you should focus your projects on things that you're interested in. The most important thing that you can do with a project is to actually make progress on it and to finish it, hopefully. If you're excited enough about the topic or the techniques that you're using, it increases the odds that you learn as much as possible. It's a scatter plot with a very robust data set. Well, <laughs> that escalated quickly. Now, after learning the basics of Python and doing some projects, I think the world is really your oysters. That's essentially all I really do is just more projects to learn new things. I recommend just going nuts on new projects that focus on skills that you found to be relevant to your own journey. For example, in most companies, SQL is really important. If your goal is to get a job, it could be very worthwhile to pick up that skill. I don't start with SQL because I think it's relatively easy to learn compared to Python. And if you can learn Python, you should be able to pick up SQL pretty quickly. If you're fascinated with computer vision or image analysis, you should probably direct your learning and projects towards deep learning or some of the other relevant techniques there. As you can tell, after a certain point in time, you really need to adapt your plan to fit your exact interests and aptitudes. Probably don't wanna hear this, but this is something that you need to do for yourself. I can't tell you what you're interested in, right? To be perfectly honest, 
I think that that's all there really is to it. After you get to this point, you're just repeating doing projects and picking up new information. After this point, if I wanna learn something new, I just read up on it and I try to apply it as quickly as possible on data. Your projects and your work also become a reference for how you've used many algorithms or how you've done different types of analysis techniques in the past. You can just reference it if you have a similar problem in the future and you have a really good starting point. As you grow, your iteration loops also become tighter and tighter and you wanna focus more on learning really good habits rather than just learning specific things. I created the 66 days of data to help perpetuate good habits in the data science learning process. You're welcome to join my initiative at any time. And I've left some more links in the description below about what that is. Now, most of you are probably wondering, how long does this learning process take? And it's a really good question. It's probably why I get asked so much. To be completely transparent, I think you could get a good understanding of the basics and be starting with projects in as little as six months. For me, it took a year upwards to a year and a half, right? I really don't recommend focusing too much on how long it takes. This is a lifelong learning process. So who really cares if it takes you three months, six months, a year, or even five years, as long as you acquire the knowledge. One thing that I do want to end on is the concept of goals. When you create your roadmap, start thinking about your goals for learning. What concepts would you like to learn? What analysis would you like to do? Most people shouldn't be learning data science just to know the material. It should be about what you can leverage these skills to achieve. Have these things in mind when you learn, but don't be afraid to adjust accordingly. How could you possibly set accurate goals if you know so little about the field in the beginning? Your goal setting, your projects, and your learning, they have to evolve as you continue to grow in this domain. If your goals are the same when you started, you know, six months from then, I think that there's probably something wrong. I see so many people getting disappointed that they didn't accomplish what they had set out to do when they really had no clue what they were, you know, setting out to do to begin with. When someone's starting, they might say, oh, I want to understand all of deep learning, but that's not a good goal, right? You might want to just understand what a convolutional neural net is. And that's a more accurate thing that could be done in the time span that you're considering. But you wouldn't really know that unless you learned a little bit more about this process in this field. As you start learning more, you can start setting these more accurate and realistic goals. Now, it might be a little extra work, but I really recommend watching this video again and thinking about your learning plan. Share about your plan and your goals below so that we can all keep each other accountable and, and we can all hopefully learn more about data science in the upcoming year. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.